اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملائل الأعلى ليوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم هذا سيد السلطان الله سيد الشيخ عبد الله الفائز درستاني سيد الشيخ محمد ناظم عادل الحقاني سيد الشيخ محمد عادل الرباني إن شاء الله عينونا بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عسى نحضر بفضل الله طريقتنا الصحبة والخير في الجمعية أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم وبي الله وبي بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم وبي those who are on authority among you الحمد لله we always start with salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم because we are in need to make our gatherings fragrant ones we are in need to start on the wrong foot, as they say. Because when you praise Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is honoring you back for that honor you gave to his beloved. And if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is honoring you, then inshallah, after, everything after that is, is going to be good. If Allah is sending salah, making sending salawat on us, sending his mercy on us for praising his beloved, sending his barakah, his blessings, then everything else will be good, inshallah, in the in our gatherings. That's why you don't find a place of dhikrullah, especially in Ahl uh, al in which there is not a word or a dhikr of salah ala nabi or an ashid praising Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, must be. Must be because that is the door. That is the door, that is the way to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless that gathering. And that's why we are starting with salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every time to get ourselves, uh, yani to, to have that light and that mercy Inshallah, open in our gatherings. And then we're asking madad from our mashayikh. We're asking support from our shaykh because that is the reality. We are sitting, we know no, nothing special about uh, us. We are sitting. Uh, the only thing that's special in our gatherings is that we are believing we are connected to awliyaullah uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is awliya and because we are connected to them then uh, we are connected to their master and the master of all creation Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one chain, one link, one tree from, from the last link all the way up to Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa Imam al-Muttaqeen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and we are asking madad from those teachers, we're asking support, spiritual support. We're not people of uh, physical support. And yes, we are means seek the means to your Lord. We are seeking them as means to attract Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy uh, upon us and Prophet Sallallahu inshallah, attention on the gathering. That's means. Allah is the one who descends his mercy. Allah is the one who grants forgiveness. Allah is the one who blesses. Allah is the one. It's all but. We are, as Mawlana Sheikh Nazim used to say, Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Aziz, we are weak ones. Who are we? So we, we say we come to the door of Ahlillah with means. And we come to our Mashaykh who we believe are awliya Allah means they are connected to the spiritual reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu and we seek to be in that spiritual connection as well so it is good to always have that disclaimer and say we are nothing, nothing special only we are sitting here and we are making our tawajjuh, our direction, and we are asking our Shaykh to connect us to Prophet Sallallahu Our Shaykh, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil Rabbani, Qaddas Allah Sirul Aziz, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, raise his maqam 
Mawlana Sheikh Muhammad Adil Rabbani and his father, Mawlana Sheikh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani. Before him, and Mawlana Sheikh Abdullah Al-Faiz Daghstani. They are all men of Allah, and we are, alhamdulillah, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us to be connected to this nasab, to this lineage, to this nisbah to Prophet Sallallahu spiritual connection and spiritual lineage. We are, we are so honored and grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to be connected to such a magnificent chain, a chain of light connecting back to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah raise them and keep them healthy, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad, and grant us to see them, inshallah, physically as well, to be with them. So we start with salawat. And as we, this introduction, we tell ourselves this time, every time, why, why, why we're, yani, why is it so important to have good manners with this Prophet وسلم, and to, to be uh, connected to him? If you want to have a spiritual life, we almost go over this introduction in a different way every time to remind ourselves of the importance of having that relationship with Sayyid al Mursaleen. Otherwise, you may do yoga and stand on your head uh, all day, or you may do this, or you may do that, or you may do all kinds of spiritual practices. You may be a hafiz, you may be a uh, all kinds. But if you don't have if you don't have that mahabba and that connection and that nisba and that love for Sayyidina Muhammad and that respect, that door is not going to open for. Uh, for, to, for your heart to have a taste of sweetness. That only comes when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu is happy with, uh, when, when we are showing honor and respect to Sayyidina Muhammad, when we are praising him, when we are loving him, that Iman and that faith increases. So we have to always remind ourselves of this reality and remind people because now we live at a time where people have put doubt in the beliefs of Muslims about their Prophet you know, the, the, and, and they, they're scaring people away from believing even Prophet has any role to play in their life. And because that's such a dangerous thing uh, and that's such a disruptive uh, thing for people to actually have real spiritual lives. You need Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu You need him uh, as your Imam. You need him. You need to love him. You need to honor him. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu And last week we we spoke about his role as Rahmatan Alameen and the perfect mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah called him. He is mercy to the worlds. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu mercy to all creation without exception believing unbelieving uh, ins jinn all kinds of awalim there isn't any creation that prophet وسلم, is not mercy to whether you believe it or not is of no uh, uh, consequence because we allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad if you believe it good for you if you don't believe it you are preventing yourself from a, a grand khair because you if you believe it then you have to show gratitude if you believe you are the recipient of that magnificent mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Muhammadun Rasulullah sallam, and that all kinds of goodnesses all kinds of uh, beauties all kinds of happiness all kinds of uh, khair uh, is coming to you because of that then you have to, see, to, to show your gratitude uh, and that's why what we are doing we are coming here to remind ourselves about Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, so that our love increase for him our ishq inshallah increase because if we know him we must love him if we are sincere human beings if we are honest human beings and somebody shows you uh, the perfect, the perfection of a humanity in a person, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
the perfect goodness in him, the perfect beauty, the perfect kindness, uh, the perfect mercy, the perfect generosity, all these things. Who cannot love some unless they are a munafiq, unless they are rotten from the inside? You must love such, a, such, such qualities in anyone. We love beauty. We love perfection in anyone. So when you know about Sayyidina Muhammad's perfection, you should love him. You must love him if you have any goodness in you. And therefore, uh, Sayyidina Ali says, Man ra'ahu badihatan habahu wa man khalatahu or ma'na wa man whoever spent time with him and got, and got to know him salawatu rabbi wa salam alayhi fell in love with him. And last week we recited a hadith to show an example of how merciful and he was and how his whole he wanted to save people, save them from their bad manners and save them from themselves. And we talked about the Arabi who came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and showed disrespect and bad manners and the companions wanted to kill him. They, they jumped uh, because this is their Habib, this is their beloved. Uh, they value him, or they valued Sayyidina Muhammad over everything in, in their lives, over their, over their uh, families, over their selves, everything. So when somebody showed disrespect to him, they all got up ready to uh, stop that person. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw that and he, told, he, he signaled to them to leave him. And then he gave that person what he want more than he wanted. And you can go back to the to the previous Khadm uh, al-Khawajagan sohba. I think they post it was posted today as well. Know your Prophet Rahmatan al And so we continue with showing examples of that mercy. And I'm reading this is not from my head this is from a book called Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam al insan al kamil to a great wali dr sayyid muhammad ali al maliki may allah sanctify his secret um, he is hasani from ahl al bayt from mashayikh makkah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to uh, benefit from his knowledge and his uh, connection inshallah and he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam لا يبلغني أحد منكم عن لا يبلغني أحد منكم عن أحد من أصحاب شيئا فإني أحب أن أخرج إليكم وأنا سليم الصدر رواه أبو داود في الأدب. so he صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم said that none of you should come complaining about one of my companions. don't come to me say this companion is like this this companion is like that he said because he said i love to come and be with you without having anything in my heart towards anyone i want to sit and he is a rahm al muhdat i don't want to have anything against anyone in my heart don't tell me anything bad about anyone and this is something that is now forgotten uh, Sunnah that Prophet Sallallahu is teaching us. Um, don't go and bringing something. If you see something wrong with or a fault in someone, don't go to his friends. Don't go to his family. Don't go to the people he works with and say, oh, that one, you know, he's like that. Uh, because we are people. And sometimes you know, people don't check. And then you develop. Uh, some negativity in the people's hearts towards a person. Cover. Allah covers. Even if you see a fault in your brothers that is not harming anyone, cover it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cover our faults. وَمِن شَفَقَتِهِ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, From his care for his ummah صلى الله عليه وسلم that he used to تَخْفِيفَهُ وَتَسْهِيلَهُ He used to make it easy for the companions, for the ummah. He used to choose the things that are not taxing. If he had a choice to make things easy for his ummah in terms of burdens, in terms of deeds, in terms of worship, 
he chose always to do that. وَكَرَاهَتُهُ أَشْيَاءُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ مَخَافَةَ أَنْ تُفْرَضَ عَلَيْهِ And he used to dislike uh, that they will be burdened with more things, more obligations. So he, when he had a choice, although يعني, he would always choose, he, as he said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, لولا أن أشق على أمتي لأمرتهم بالسواك مع كل وضوء. That he said, if I, if I wasn't afraid to make it difficult for the, my ummah, I would have ordered them to use this siwak for every wudu. Because once he orders, then, uh, then there, there's, there's a price to pay if we disobey Prophet ﷺ. We have to obey him. So he refrained from ordering his ummah while he's thinking. He's worried that we may not be able to carry. And Regarding the uh, night prayer, Salawatu Rabbi Wasallam Ali, Qiyamul Layl, he also يعني, made it easy for them. And when some of the companions wanted to uh, continuously uh, fast, like he was sometimes, Prophet Sallallahu would fast one, two, three days, uh, then, then he would. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell them not to do it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يطعمني ويسقين he said, he, he said to us that you're not like me your hay'ah is not like my hay'ah yes we look like each other human being but you're I'm not I'm nothing like you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was feeding him and giving him to drink even while, while he was fasting and we're not like that so when people say Prophet ﷺ is just a man like us, when is uh, Prophet ﷺ in his, with his own words saying, Ana, I, I'm not like you. I may look like you, but I'm not like you. Uh, and he, he was uh, always concerned and caring for, for uh, his companions. And we all know that when he used to, in the, during the prayer, if he hears a baby crying, he would shorten the prayer, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because his rahmah, his mercy. Anytime th there's a call, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's some, a, a baby cry is like uh, someone calling for help. It's like someone, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so soft and so kind that he, his shafaqa, not just for the baby, but also for the mother. Because imagine the mother wanting to uh, comfort her baby and Prophet Sallallahu would shorten the prayer. And this is an amazing hadith, when shafaqati Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is not hadith, he's narrating all these things from hadiths, the author, but uh, it's all based on a hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From his care to his ummah, he, he Prophet ﷺ made dua to Allah Sallam. أي أي ما رجل رجل سببته أو لعنته فجعل ذلك له زكاة ورحمة وصلاة وطهورة وقربة تقربه بها إليك يوم القيامة. يعني سبحان الله. Prophet ﷺ is asking Allah, O oh my Lord. Anybody, any human being that I uh, may have sabbatu, yani may have uh, harmed him with, with my words, or la'antu, or, or I cursed him. Fajal dalika lahu zakatan wa rahmatan wa salatan wa tuhuran wa qurbatan tuqaribu bi ilaykum. Allah is asking dua that anyone who I may say something against, whatever I said to him, make that for him zakat. Make that for him charity and mercy, and, and salat, and, and dua, and prayer, wa tuhur, and purification, wa qurba, and nearness, that you bring him near to you. Yani, who does Prophet Sallallahu if Prophet says something negative to somebody, who is he doing it? To somebody who is harming him. Because Salawatul Rabbi wa sallam would never say anything to anyone, even when he's harmed, he was patient and forbearance. And he only, he may say something if, if somebody is transgressing against Allah's rules and maybe harming others, 
he may have said something like that. So that person, Prophet is saying to him, then he's making dua for that person that by the, because I said that about him, then grant him mercy, grant him nearness, grant him uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam charity from you and purify him because I said this about him. Subhanallah. The perfection of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam endlessly. Keep us with him. Keep us from his ummah until our last breath and grant us to be with him and to witness him, see him in dunya and akhirah, insha'Allah. And grant us to drink from his hawth. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 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 Wa s